Yo, 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 peoples. It's your boy MM2K back again with another one. Hey, yo, can you do me a huge favor? You know what I'm saying? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Hey, look, I just wanted to get in the studio real quick. You know what I'm saying? Drop this on y'all because it's been a long time since your boy's been able to do something um, via YouTube. But before we get too deep into that, please... As you see on your screen right now, okay, I got um, I got some special shows coming to different platforms. Unfortunately, because of the, the the snafu that we ran into last week with YouTube, I can no longer solely put all my content on YouTube. So here's what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to follow me on primarily Twitch as well, which is www.twitch.tv slash mightymost2000. All right. And then I need you to follow me on Mixer too. Uh, we're going to find some some content to put on Mixer, maybe some Xbox uh, console stream and stuff, you know, whatever. But there's going to be different, unique material on all three different platforms. You know, like this is exclusive to YouTube, but there's going to be exclusive stuff to Twitch. And I'm going to let you know right now, Twitch is going to be uh, where my biggest individual project yet is going to be hosted on Twitch. So you definitely want to come there. You definitely want to sign up there because again, we're going to have exclusive content to all three different platforms. So I want to welcome everybody. Thank you um, again for following MM2K content, PNTS network content um, throughout E3 2019. But I want to show y'all something. Uh, what I want to talk about today is um, I want to talk about this whole power narrative thing, right? People have been talking about power, 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 power. And what started this is a lot of us made the assumption because Phil told us so, right? Because Phil told us so that Scarlet was going to be, or the Anaconda Scarlet, whatever it is, the, X, the next Xbox console was going to be the most powerful console um, on the market kicking off next gen. Then there were some questions about that um, that came into play. Colin Morarity, and then I believe another guy that uh, is the editor of Game Informer, I believe, uh, had said that they had some inside scoop uh, and some inside information that, according to the dev kits that are out already, that um, the next Xbox or the next micro Windows gaming console may not be the most powerful one out there. Hmm, right? So then since then, you've had some pushback. You've had um, Windows Gaming fans put out an article from uh, um, Albert Pinello. He's a former VP at, uh, at Windows uh, uh, prior at Xbox Gaming, right? Where Albert Pinello tells you, you can't go off of dev kits because of this, that, and the other. Then you also had people resurfacing this interview that Matt Booty had um, played with, um, or he had given to Bloomberg News. But I want y'all to listen to this interview that Matt gave to Bloomberg News in culmination with something Phil said. And then we're going to talk about this whole power debacle. All right. So give me a second here. Let's do this. This is the interview, courtesy of Bloomberg, the comments that Matt Booty had given to uh, uh, Bloomberg News, and Matt Booty is is a is is an exec or 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 you know high level manager at, um, at the quote unquote Xbox Gaming Division under Phil. Um, I think he's responsible for a lot of their first party development, and he got his hands in different pots doing stuff. But Matt Booty has said this to Bloomberg News in regarding the next Xbox's power. Uh, you know, the, what, what, unveiling the early plans, and we want to really get out early what it's going to mean for players and gamers, and we'll share pricing information later on. But will this be the ultimate premium product? Is that oh, what you're going for? I think for? it will absolutely be the most powerful immersive console on the market. The big so he says that, right? I don't want to get myself in trouble here, so let me do it this way. He says that, but then... This came from Phil, from the Giant Bomb interview. And again, Phil is above 
uh, Matt Booty. But Phil had revealed this around the same time to John Baum during their interview. So let's listen to what Phil has to say about this whole power thing. Scarlett, specifically, you talk about, you know, obviously wanting it to be the best. Um, with the Xbox One X, uh, it seemed like there was a really focus there to be like, hey, we want to be able to say, this is the most powerful console you yeah. can get. Is that how you feel about Scarlett? Do you feel like with, with Scarlett, you really want to be out there more powerful than everything else? How important is raw power to I you? I think raw power point? is very important. Um, and I know certain people are kind of picking up on the words that I use and hey, you used to say most powerful. I really can only control the console I build. I don't have a PS5 dev kit, so I, right. I don't yeah, know yeah. Um, what they are, uh, what they're building. Um, we both are AMD, you know, the, the kind of spectrum of technologies that are out there are pretty similar. At some level, it's going to be what price point do you pick? Right. Um, so I didn't, I don't want it to get into kind of a, a, a silliness. Like I want to build a great, uh, Project Scarlet. I want people to feel like they've had, they can have amazing console experiences they've never seen before, mm -hmm. um, and that they've got the best lineup of content and services of any platform out there. And we're totally focused on that. And I know we have other things going with like coming to PC and XCloud, um, but I'll say that you know, being a leader in console is something that uh, the team is committed to to doing. And and that's the we're not building this this program to to try to aim for second place. We were gonna right. build it aiming for first place and, um, and that's, that's what I wanna hit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I let that play in totality even though a lot of that went over more than what we needed to focus on. All right, so if you compare the two, you have the Windows gaming stands or fan, whatever you wanna call them, all right? Um, that wanna focus on this, 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 this tweet from Albert Pinella and we're going to get into that because that tweet from Albert Padella is really telling here. They want to focus on that and they want to focus on what Matt Booty said, but then they want to ignore what Phil said. And what Phil is basically saying is he don't know. He don't know. So this is a perfect segue into the takeaways. Notice how Phil said he can't determine the power because he ain't seen a PlayStation 5 dev kit. He said that. I will play it for you again. Listen. Scarlett, specifically, you talk about, you know, obviously wanting it to be the best. Um, with the Xbox One X, uh, it seemed like there was a really focus there to be like, hey, we want to be able to say, this is the most powerful console you yeah. can get. Is that how you feel about Scarlett? Do you feel like with, with Scarlett, you really want to be out there more powerful than everything else? How important is raw power to I you? I think raw power point? is very important. Um, and I know certain people are kind of picking up on the words that I use and hey, you used to say most powerful. I really can only control the console I build. I don't have a PS5 dev kit, so I, right. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Did you hear that? I don't have a PS5 dev kit, but I don't, so I don't know. But meanwhile, right? <laughs> Everybody wants to go off of Albert Pinella's tweet and Albert Pinella is saying, well, don't go by dev kits because you can't determine the power there, but Phil is telling you he don't know because he don't have the dev kit. And then you got Matt Booty saying, well, it's definitely going to be the most powerful. But which one is it? I feel like I'm in the middle of the Three Stooges here. This is, this is the culmination of Microsoft doublespeak that a lot of us hardcore gamers have suffered from this entire generation, okay? So here's what I'm saying in light of this. And to be fair to Microsoft, we don't know until the let until the finalized product gets in everybody's hands, right? But when stands, when gumps, like them soft, fanboy gamers, you cannot combat uh, um, innuendo with more innuendo because you look even sillier utilizing and 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 posting the sources that you're using. Microsoft executives. They're contradicting what you're posting. So just stop, okay? Just stop right now, all right? With that being said, I'm gonna tell you this much. I don't have the final product in, you hand, in your hand, in my hand. Most of you guys that are listening to this don't have the final product in your hand. Don't know if anybody has the final product in their hand, right? But the next Windows gaming console needs to have 
the console power crown, period. When that thing releases, it has to. If not, what will be the product placement? Now, also in that interview clip that I played from Phil, he says he wants to have the best console and services and all this other stuff. Well, let me break you down. Let me, let me break down, excuse me. I'm getting so excited. I'm talking crazy here. Let me break down for you all of the pillars that are going to make up this Windows gaming experience using the quote-unquote Xbox moniker. Well, first and foremost, you have the streaming service that is being offered by the console maker. The problem is, and let's be honest, I'm sorry, PlayStation Now, once they go day and date with their stuff, it's going to be the more uh, lucrative or, or, or more likable streaming service out of the two. Because it has the PlayStation lineup, which is far more appealing to gamers at mass than the Xbox lineup. Period. I'm sorry. People might like Halo a la carte. They might like Gears a la carte. But this generation, Xbox has fell behind and continuing to provide quality AAA IPs. They fell behind the curve. So they were fighting to catch up. They pretty much caught up last generation. And then they completely dropped the ball. Because of that, the more, I, uh, the more appealing service is going to be PlayStation now to the masses, regardless of what we think. And the purpose of these services are not to satisfy us, the hardcore gamers, it's to satisfy the masses. So you lose there, Microsoft. PlayStation now, once they go day and day with their backup lineup and what they're going to provide, is going to be more appealing to the masses, period. So then you look at what's being offered online. Well, I'm going to tell you this. The culmination or the combination of Stadia with its streaming ability, along with Uplay Plus, and then Stadia allowing any other services on their platform, meaning if you got Origin, EA Origins access, they might allow them on, whoever it may be. They may allow them on the combination of Stadia's capabilities along with them combining those streaming capabilities with other Game Pass like services are going to make what they're offering more lucrative and more more appealing to gamers than what uh, X Cloud and Game Pass is offering. And if you're worried about your backup lineup. You don't need to invest further to enjoy your backup lineup via xCloud. They're going to let you do it. Enjoy xCloud free of charge as long as you have an Xbox One generation console. So I ain't got to invest further to enjoy my older games as long as they're digital. And then, on top of that, now we have Steam via its Steam Link service. Now they're offering something and they're actually putting something in people's hands. I've tested it out. Check us out on pntsnetwork.com in our article section. I have an article up there talking about my experience with this new version of Steam Link. So much better than what Microsoft is offering right now, which is zilch. Microsoft has nothing in your hands. I can actually go and play on the go on my phone via Steam. So they have the PC market wrapped up right the pc and the mobile market wrapped up because the steam actually has something that they're putting in your hands and stadia in combination with you play plus and anybody else that joins them has the more appealing product so where does that leave microsoft you have to microsoft you have to have something called product placement what is the identity of your of, of your console slash goods and services and if you're trying to live and die off of this family-friendly friendly moniker, you will perish. You will fail. Period. You're not going to have the, the preferred console because you're not invested in a console. PlayStation got that in the bag. You don't even care about your console. All like that. It's just another ends to a means. And as far as you're concerned, because of the more people that are out there that utilize mobile gaming, they're the they're the least appealing ends to a means as far as you're concerned. So you're not gonna win. So you're not going to be the favorite in a console battle. Then 
on the console streaming front, again, PlayStation Now, as soon as they go day and date, they're going to be the more lucrative service. They're going to be the more appealing service. So you're going to lose that battle. Then you got Game Pass and xCloud versus Uplay Plus Stadium, whatever else Stadia lets on board. They're going to be the more appealing services. Then you got, then you got Sting. Like, come on. So Microsoft's strategy with a little bit of this, a little bit everywhere, like GE, is not going to work unless you have Mindshare. And your best place to get Mindshare from, if you're an already established company, is you got to get Mindshare from your hardcore. And you're little by little losing your hardcore. You've lost them in droves with this piss poor E3 in 2019. And if you release a console that even on just on paper is not the most powerful console out there, then you're dooming yourself, Microsoft. You can't have this GE strategy of a little bit of everything everywhere. If nobody, if there's, if there's not consumer confidence in your product, you're already established. You don't get to live off of the, the fanatical and, and, and the daydreaming mantra that Google gets to live off of because they don't have anything for people to go off prior yet. So they get to, 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 to play with people's imagination as far as what the product and services is going to provide. You don't have that luxury. You're already out. So people are going to base the, the, the probability of your success based upon your current fan base. And if your current fan base is not full-throated behind this, if there's a rift like there is now, and then you further damage that rift by not having the most powerful console out there, even on paper, as quote-unquote silly like Phil Stead as you think that is, then you're destined to fail. You can call it silly or whatever you want, Phil. It is what it is. And you're not in a position yet to change that. So you got to go with the flow, all right? You got to go with the flow until you can change the current. You're not in a place to change the current yet. So that's it. Xbox needs more, again, than this family-friendly moniker to make it. But at the end of the day, what do I know, right? <laughs> That's it from your boy, MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Because at the end of the day, who cares what I think, right? You can come with me and come at me, like I always tell you. But if you did like what you what, what I had to say, then, you know what I'm saying, click the links below to follow me on the corner of every boulevard, literally, all right? And, hey, do me a huge favor. Don't forget, I do a show with your peoples, Dirk Griggity, Nethel, Snow Bunny. It's called Scram Punks. We do it every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Dirk Griggity's channel, Look up hashtag Scram Punks for more information on that. And last but not least, follow my brethren, the Broadband Bullies. We're doing the damn thing. Check us out on that Discord link, man. We're killing it on there. We need your support, so follow us on that Patreon, all right? And last but not least, check out that gear. It's fly. And as always, you have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.